What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're gonna hang out and do some makeup. Um, I'm just feeling really chill and chatty and thought let's do a get ready with me. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Um, so for primer, I want to use this one from Honest because I haven't used it in a really long time. This is the Everything Primer. From what I remember, this kind of has like a golden, like glowy finish. Um, let me zoom in just a little bit. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me clip my hair out of the way. I really like these. Actually, I got some from Charlotte Tilbury. Hold on. If you saw my, uh, I think it was one of my last vlogs, I went to a Charlotte Tilbury event in the city and they gave these um, little Charlotte Tilbury hair clips. So I'm gonna use these. Very cute. Love that. Um, okay, so now I can get into the makeup. I'm gonna use the Honest Primer. It just looks like this and put on the skin. I also got a new moisturizer from Honest Beauty. I think actually after I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna film a haul because I, just like honestly the last two years, I haven't bought much makeup at all, but especially the last couple of months, I haven't bought much and I did a no buy during June. And so then I had to replenish some stuff. I need like new face moisturizer, new shampoo, conditioner, all of that. So I did go to Ulta and get some things. Um, so I think I'm gonna do a haul because it's been so long since I've done one. And I don't even know if that's like interesting on YouTube anymore, but like I just, I've had some revelations recently and I just like don't give a shit anymore about like what I'm supposed to be doing and stuff. We'll get into that because I feel like I have a lot to talk about. But yeah, I think I might just do a haul. I feel like that would make my soul happy. And I wanna show you everything that I got because it's been so long. Um, I'm gonna use the Healthy Glow Foundation from Too Faced. I have been loving this. I have the shade Light Beige, and I'm gonna be applying this with my Fox 4 brush that I created with Sigma. My brush set is still available, by the way. You can get it on Sigma's website, or you can get it on Amazon too, actually. Um, but I like to just pop this droop right on the top. Sometimes I'll work it off the back of my hand. It really just depends on my mood. And I just apply this on my face. I did do a self tan kind of recently, but it, I feel like faded really fast. I got the two hour one from Loving Tan and it looked really nice, but I just don't think it lasts very long. Um, I think the regular developing one is my favorite. I am bummed that I just like haven't been out in the sun much this season. Um, normally in the summer, I like to like just go outside as much as possible, get like a natural tan. It looks so good and feels so good. And I just like haven't done that much. Um, so I'm missing having a nice natural tan. Um, but okay, so... I kind of wanted to give like a little bit of a life update or guess it's not really a life update. It's just kind of like, I don't know, just some stuff that I've been thinking about recently. And I feel like it's all good things. At first it was like, I was stressed and upset and like whatever. And I just feel like I'm coming out on the other end feeling better than before, which is awesome. Um, but last week I kind of had like a little mini uh, mental breakdown. Um, and I kind of just realized that like I haven't been really happy and just with like how, how do I explain this without it sounding like I'm bitching about, at whatever, I'm just gonna be candid. I haven't been happy with like the internet and like social media and I've talked about this so many times before. You're probably so tired of hearing me talk about it but it's been very real for me because this is my career. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out like, what has changed? Why am I feeling this way? Why has this feeling not gone away? And what do I do about it? Like, it's just so strange. Um, and I've realized that a lot of the issues that I have when it comes to social media is the social media aspect of it. So I've decided that I'm gonna delete all of my social media apps off of my phone. Don't let that scare you, I'm not gonna stop posting, but I'll kind of circle back to that in a little bit and talk about like what my plan is, but I kind of wanna explain like why I've gotten to this conclusion and why like I already feel so much better. It's been a week and I barely have gone on Instagram. And throughout the last week, cause like after I had like my little mental breakdown, I like realized that all of this was because of like being on social media, seeing what other people are doing. And like, 
honestly subconsciously comparing me to others when I didn't even realize I was doing it. It was just, it's, it was almost like just hiding in the background of my thoughts. And I felt like all of my ideas were no longer original ideas. I just felt like I had this cloud, this like brain fog where I couldn't really think for myself anymore. And I felt like, oh, this is so dramatic, but like, I didn't know who I am. Um, so I just like stopped going on social media because I, it sounds so dramatic, but as a content creator, it feels like you have to be in the know and it's not true, but it's this lie that we tell ourselves because naturally you want to do what's trending and you want to, you know, you want to do what works well. And so, you know, people see what works well and everyone kind of like does the same thing and makes it their own. And like, here's an example. Do you ever go on TikTok or Reels and there's like someone talking about something and the words come up per word? So it would look like this. I'll edit it so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. That style of video is very eye-catching. You're gonna be more inclined to read and follow along because these flashes of words are coming up and it's it's really engaging. Um, I can't remember that being really a style of video that was popular just a couple years ago. I like, honestly, when I think back to just like two years ago, I don't remember seeing that at least not as frequently as I do now. Well, it must be so engaging that like everyone kind of caught on and now everyone does that. Anytime you see any sort of podcast clip or just anything where anyone's talking that comes up, it just got me thinking about how in, in general with art and with creation in general, it's rare that there's ever going to be an original thought because art in itself is just like regurgitations of everyone else's work. That's just, you, it's almost impossible to have an original thought. Everything stems from somewhere. Inspiration comes from somewhere. The problem is, is that now with social media, it is like everyone is literally doing the same thing. Everyone is quite actually a copy and paste of another. And I think that it's now just gotten so dulled down that like nothing is interesting anymore. And I found that I was feeling that way about myself. I just felt like, like nothing is interesting. And uh, like, I appreciate comments reassuring me that you enjoy my content, you like watching it and you love what I'm doing. And even if, I get off socials and I don't see what anyone is doing and I'm still doing the same thing that I'm doing right now, it at least will feel uh, better because I'm not gonna be like, I, 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 I don't know exactly how to explain this, but it, it will be from a more original place. Not saying that like, oh, I'm gonna be the most like inspiring and like interesting creator. That's not my goal and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, I hope that by deleting that noise of seeing what everyone else is doing, it will help me feel more creative in my soul. And even if the content that I'm putting out isn't like some out, outrageously amazing whatever, it will at least be from my heart and not like tainted by what others are doing. I feel like I didn't explain that very well. Maybe I'll try again as this goes along, but I've actually sat down to record this video uh, two days ago. I could not get the words out. It was like so hard for me to describe this, but I hope that you're understanding what I'm saying. Um, and then part of me was like, th like there's always been this part of me that feels like, oh, well, I feel like not everyone's gonna understand because like not everyone's like posting on social media for like work or whatever. But aren't we though? Isn't everyone posting online, whether it be for work or you're just doing it in general? I feel like, especially since 2020, I would say like there's a big chunk of everyone in the world that is like posting online for work. Um, even if your job isn't content creation, I feel like now it's almost worse for people that aren't posting for content create or like as content creators, because now like say you have any sort of job where like you're creating anything, you're almost expected to have your portfolio on Instagram or create TikToks. Like if you're a real estate agent, like people expect I mean, I wouldn't expect this, but I just feel like it's almost like expected like, oh, well, do you have a TikTok? Oh, do you have an Instagram? Let me see your portfolio. Let me see the homes you've sold. Like, but you're a real estate agent. You're not a content creator. And now it's just gotten to the point where everyone is just expected to show up online 
But now because so many people are doing that, it's just so, it's like the light has been dulled. And I, but at the same, I, I say that now I'm like retreating because I also think it's a beautiful thing that like everyone can like create and like have a presence online if they want one and um, show their businesses. So like I can definitely see both sides of it. Um, I just feel like we haven't really evolved to be this much in each other's business. Um, since my mental breakdown, um, I've been doing a lot of research on just like social media, how it got to where it is now. I rewatched The Social Dilemma on Netflix um, really quick. I'm going to go in with my concealer. I want to use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I have NW20, but I also have NC25. I'm probably just going to need NW20 because I'm white as fuck right now. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, that's actually pretty light. I'm going to do just like a little dollop of the other one too. From the research that I've been doing, aka YouTube videos I've been listening to, we haven't evolved to be this much in each other's business. We, like our ancestors, were supposed to be in communities. So small communities. And we're made or we've evolved to like impress our close-knit group of people. We feed off of just a smaller community of people. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. But now with social media, when we post, even if we're not a content creator, but even if we post, it's being shown to so many other people that now we're trying to show up and impress hundreds, thousands, millions of people and care about what those people think, even if we don't upfront think that, that we're doing that and that we care. We're like we can tell ourselves like, oh, we don't care. At the end of the day, there is still that little inkling of like actually caring about that kind of stuff and caring about what someone thinks of you or correlating a like on your post to your value. Maybe that's not the case for you. And that's amazing if it's not, but there is a huge chunk of people that really do feel that way, myself included. I can lie to myself and tell myself that that's not how I feel. And maybe I'll go through phases where I don't feel that way, but I go through a lot of phases where I do feel that way. And um, I've been noticing that that is more often than not. Even if I like, I'll have that thought and I'll try to like fix it and be like, no, that's not true. Your value isn't in this. Your value isn't in your likes or your comments or your views it's still there. That feeling is still there. So I think that is kind of like part of why I sort of like had this meltdown is because I realized like I put, I have put so much of my personal value in my career online. And then when it started not doing as well, I felt like shit because I had put so much of myself into it. Even to the point, like I started doing more vlogs and things and it's like the more that I would show of my life, the more of my life became a job and the more that um, I wasn't showing up online to just show up online, the more that like creating for the internet became my life. So I just kind of realized that throughout the day, I was making many decisions constantly throughout the day. Sitting, so like, let me just walk you through like a normal morning. I have my cup of coffee, I sit on the back porch with my dog and just like have our morning together. Instantly I make a decision, oh, I should take a picture of this and post it on stories because you wanna be active on stories, you wanna be relevant. And then I go to the gym, oh, I should record my gym workout, oh, I should show my food. You have to decide in the moment, am I gonna make a TikTok about this? Am I gonna make a reel? Am I gonna make a YouTube video? Am I gonna vlog? How am I gonna share this? How, you know, every single aspect of my life became about content creation. And I say became like it's past tense. It's current tense. It's, it's it, every aspect of my life has become about creating content online. That's no one else's fault but my own. I'm not sitting here like trying to bitch about like the system. I've done this to myself. Um, and the way that I think about it is my fault. And there's a silver lining because I've kind of come to a conclusion that where it's like I can still create content and make this a beautiful thing um, without being so in my head and without comparing and all of that jazz. So I'll get to that. But um, yeah, it, it became to a point where I have just felt so stuck because I've done things a certain way for so long and 
there's always this pressure to continue to show up in so many ways. And even with all of those feelings, I still always felt like I was never doing enough because there's always other creators out there that are literally showing up so consistently on so many different platforms. In my mind, I, I do not understand how. Truly, I do not understand how. They definitely have to have some help Obviously they have like editors and teams and whatever, but even with that, I just feel like that's gotta be, that's so fucking hard. And I was thinking about like, oh wow, like, well, if I just had this, this or this, it'd be so much easier. But then at the end of the day, you're so scheduled. Like these people have to be so scheduled to like create certain things. And then it's like, well, that's taking out like the creativeness. It's taking out your creativity. Now you're being forced to like create X, Y, Z, this part of the day. And I don't know, I just feel like maybe it's easier for people that aren't so creative. You know, I think that's, I guess that's what's interesting about social media is it's created a, a space for people to create content that aren't creative people. Um, not to say that people aren't creative, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm, I, I guess that's like creating a space for people that like don't have those like sort of, I guess like more of an artistic brain. Because for someone like me, even though I am a very organized, or I try to be a very organized person, when it comes to creation, organizing that has always, always, nine times out of 10, made me feel worse because I feel like I'll set out a plan for those things. And then when I'm not fe feeling creative to do those things, I feel like a failure instantly. So I've tried that today's like a perfect example because like two days ago I felt I like sat down to like record this and it was like I had nothing to say I had zero words to come out of my mouth I got to like my foundation and I turned off the camera because I was just like I can't I don't know what to say like I'm not feeling creative at all like I didn't want to do my makeup like I didn't feel you know what I mean flash forward to today Sunday it's my day off I'm like I want to film a chatty get ready with me video and I think I'll do the podcast today it's you know, I've got that like creative mind and I always try to fight that so hard to live up to what I'm supposed to be doing and how I'm supposed to show up on social media and how I'm supposed to create instead of like, there is no supposed to, like how you're supposed to create. That's part of like being a creative is like going with that flow, which is so fucking annoying, especially from someone who likes to plan and be organized. Um, it's weird. It's like, I've got the type A and type B personality, but um, what do I want to do for bronzer today? You know, I have just really been enjoying the Makeup by Mario cream bronzer. I have the shade medium. I've just been really liking this. So I'm gonna use this today. So that's kind of like where all of this has stemmed from. And I've felt like, how am I supposed to, where's my contour brush? But yeah, I've, that's where all of this has stemmed from. And I ended up just getting off of social media because I realized that was really just in the way. I, like, I kind of like had this realization where it's like, well, I don't, the problem is not showing up and creating YouTube videos because I love this. This has always been like my happy place. It's been everything else and the loudness and the noise of social media and like the monster that it has become. So um, I logged off of everything. Well, not logged off. I just didn't open anything. And I just listened to a lot of like interviews and watched The Social Dilemma and all of this stuff. And it just explains it so well. I'm not even gonna try to explain. I'll just link interviews that explained everything and made a lot of sense to me and helped me understand why I'm feeling how I'm feeling and what to do next. Um, one of my favorites is an interview from Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist. And he was just explaining how dopamine works and especially with like social media um he talks about oh, random intermittent reward and like how like when you're scrolling on instagram and tiktok specifically how like you'll get like a dopamine hit from watching something that like increases your dopamine so something that interests you and then 
you keep scrolling because you don't know when you're gonna get that next reward, but you do know that something's coming. So it's not every video, it's not every other video, there's no system to it. You just don't know when it's coming. And so you're just constantly looking and searching. And he was explaining how that's purposeful. They do that on purpose. It keeps you there, it keeps you engaged. But then also he was saying that like if we were studied like a lab rat or like studied like a dog, like if you think about a dog that was digging for a bone that wasn't there and they just kept digging and digging, the conclusion would be that the dog was sick and because he's looking for something that's not there. That's how we are when we're scrolling on social media. It was a very interesting comparison. He also explained how like, when you get that first initial dopamine hit, it's really high. And then you can see something else that would be almost more interesting than the first thing. But because your dopamine had already spiked, now that thing is no longer as interesting had it had you seen it first. So it's like you're constantly trying to like get to that level of dopamine or higher, but it's never going to happen. And so that your dopamine drops. It's so interesting, like very scientific, but that's the extent of me trying to explain it to you because there, it's just so in depth. So I just listened to a lot of interviews online from a lot of different people in like the tech industry, rewatch social dilemma, which if you haven't seen that, that's basically, um, a documentary and a lot of the people that are interviewed for that are people in the tech industry that actually created social media or the social media that we know today. Basically their intentions were good, but they didn't realize that they were basically creating a monster. It goes into a lot more than I'm explaining right now, but it was just refreshing to hear again and to just kind of like confirm that like the way that I'm feeling about all of this is like accurate. And what's interesting is all of those people, like they're people that worked at Instagram, Facebook, they don't have social media and like their family doesn't have social media, which that should tell you something that the makers of these apps, they don't even have it and they don't like let their kids have it. I just think that's very fascinating. There definitely needs to be some guidelines. Like one of the things is that basically most of us are addicted to our phones. I would, I would say most of us. I, I don't know very many people that aren't, actually now that I'm thinking of it, I don't know anybody that's not like addicted to their phone or like being on social media to some capacity, to some capacity. I'm currently listening to the audiobook by Anna Lemke. It's about dopamine and she is comparing our social media addiction to like an actual drug addiction because it's the way it happens is in the same way. Now, obviously like a drug and alcohol addiction is way more severe and can kill you. Um, but she was explaining how like when somebody is like, an alcoholic or a drug addict, they wouldn't do drugs and alcohol in moderation. It would be like, no, we're done, you know, to heal from the addiction. Where like social media, yes, we are comparing apples and oranges. Social media addiction is not the same as drugs and alcohol, but it's interesting because we don't have that in moderation and it's not looked at as like a bad thing. Um, and I think maybe part of that is because good things can come from social media. But I think at the end of the day, like I was saying, there needs to be some boundaries. I think about it like with kids, you wouldn't let your kid just eat cake all day long and have sugar all day long. Is it something they can have sometimes? Absolutely. But like you wouldn't just let them eat it all day long. And I feel like that's the same thing with the internet and with our phones, with technology. But like we're not putting those limits in place. We're not, most of us are not putting boundaries in place, even with kids. Like that's a whole separate animal. And I understand that like social media can connect you to humans, but it's not the same thing. Talking with someone through the phone and through the internet is not the same thing as talking in person. We can all agree on that. There's definitely something more magical and more special about talking to somebody in person. That honestly is what has like kind of got me to this conclusion of like, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna be on social media. I mean, and it's, I love creating content though. Like I love YouTube. So that's kind of like where I've gotten to now. This past week, I, re oh, whoa, I brought that way too far out. This past week, I really just kind of disconnected just so I can like think about like, how can I continue to do the thing that I love, which is create YouTube videos and try to inspire and, and just continue working pretty much while not being so connected to everybody else. And then I thought, who said that I need to be connected to everybody else? 
What's interesting is when I think about social media and like how it got to be to where it is today, it's interesting because it's all happened really fast, but it's been a very slow and gradual progression at the same time. So I'm 31, I'll be 32 in December. I think it was in middle school when I got AIM and then, or AIM, whatever you called it, like seventh grade, I got my space, maybe eighth grade. I don't think, maybe I didn't get it till eighth grade. And then in high school, I didn't get Facebook until senior year of high school. And then Instagram, I don't think I downloaded until 2013. Even with what it was in 2013, I don't think that it really started to like really kick off until 2015 and onwards, but especially even within the last like five years. I think it's when it really started to snowball, which kind of scares me for the future, just to see where it's going to go. If it's already snowballed so much in the last five years, what's gonna happen in the next two years or the next, you know, it's just bizarre. Um, even like TikTok, like I remember at the beginning of 2020, I was on a brand trip right before the world shut down and they were just starting to talk about TikTok and they're like, oh, do you guys have a TikTok? We just downloaded it. And it was like, s most people didn't on that trip. Some people did, but it was just, it was such a new thing. And that was 2020. We're now three years later and it's like the number one app that everyone's using to create content, which is fascinating because here's the thing that's interesting to me is how now, so a lot of like brands and stuff, they they pretty much don't have a YouTube budget. Every All of their budget basically is for TikTok. I don't know if you noticed, I've had one brand partnership in the last year. I'm just saying that because it's, it's fascinating how fast things can change and swing into a different direction, which just makes me think about the future. It's like, okay, so then what's gonna happen next? I don't know, we're never gonna know. Um, by the way, I just used the Worth blush from Rare, and now I'm gonna um, add my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I don't remember what I was gonna say next. Oh, just about how it's expected to post on all of these platforms. I don't understand when that really became a thing. So when I started making YouTube videos, I had an Instagram, but I mainly just posted on there for fun. When I started YouTube, because YouTube has always been my passion. It's always been like my safe space. It's always been my favorite app. Out of, to this day, I love YouTube more than anything. And it's always, always, always been a positive place for me. Um, it's kind of like how Pinterest is. Like Pinterest never brings me a negative thought. I'm always just happy to go on there. It makes me feel good. YouTube has always been that place for me too. And I think part of that is it speaks to the content that I'm looking at. I don't look at like anything that's like super negative. Like I'm always looking at something that's going to inspire me or just like add to my life in a positive way. And that's the thing with the other apps is that I feel like even if your feed is like the algorithm has got you down and like you're looking at good things at the end of the day they still like feed you bullshit and it's hard to like not look at bullshit because it's just like given to you at least that's been my experience but what's interesting is when I started on YouTube I just posted there and I don't think it really was until like 2018 that I actually started to try on Instagram because I did post on Instagram like whenever I was promoting a YouTube video, but like that was it. Like I wasn't really posting anything other than that. And when I did, it was just like a selfie of like the makeup look and be like, okay, new video, go check it out. It was never like a look into my life. I never, I never shared much about that. It was always... It, it was just kind of like accenting what I did on YouTube. So when I started thinking about that, it's like, okay, since when has it been so expected that if you are a content creator, you now create content on every app? Why is that a thing? I don't understand. I mean, I get it because it's smart to do that, I suppose. But I'm just kind of realizing that that has been something that has kind of like been pushed on me rather than something that I really willingly decided. And so I just deleted all of my apps off my phone. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, 
I will still post on Instagram. I'm just going to go on like Instagram.com to do it. And it might be once a week. It might, it might be once a day. It might be once a month. I don't know. I have to kind of feel that out and figure it out. But just being on those apps, even if I just use it just to post, um, if I'm on the app itself, you end up getting distracted. It's so easy to get distracted. And like even just the main feed of like scrolling down and then that random intermittent reward, it sneaks up and it will grab your attention and or at least it grabs my attention and it's designed that way on purpose. And I am just tired of feeling like a slave to my phone, like feeling like I need to be on there. I need to be in the know. I need to know what's going on. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. And I feel like it has just taken away from like my life. And I know that's so dramatic, but I think it's because I create so much that that's how it feels. But also I know a lot of people that like don't create on social media and their screen time is up to like 14 hours a day, 16 hours a day, crazy numbers. And it's just because they're spending their free time on their phone. And it's crazy because once you're doing that, it literally feels like a, like I'm a zombie when I'm just scrolling and seeing what people are doing. And it's almost like in, an involuntary feeling. It almost feels like I didn't decide to do that. It wasn't like a conscious de decision of like, I'm going to do this. It just kind of happens to me. And I don't like that. I don't like that. And it's designed so that it's that, so that you're in engaged and that you're like, you know what I mean? So I think at the end of the day, like what I've kind of realized is that I want to be a little bit more, I want to, I want to create these boundaries and I want it to be more of like a conscious decision when I'm going on social media. And it's funny because when I see people post on socials, I assume that they're doing that. I assume that they're not feeling like a um, slave to their phone or that they're like, I, I can't imagine other people constantly scrolling. In my head, I assume people have like good boundaries with their phone and they're living their life and now they're posting these beautiful things online. Why is that my perception? Because I know that that's not the case. I know most people are having the same experience that I do. And the reason why is because I've talked about this with multiple different people and everyone feels the same way. So why do I have it in my head that like I just have this problem and everyone else is just living this awesome, beautiful life and then they're posting about it and then they're going on and then they're off their phone. They're not. Everyone is like sucked into these phones and these devices. And if, I don't know if you've noticed, but like, do you ever go to like the grocery store and then you're standing in line and as soon as you get a second to be like f to not think about something it's like oh let me pull out my phone and like not think let me just cure this quick boredom and stay occupied it's like why can't we just sit alone with our thoughts so i've been making a point to like not pull out my phone if i'm in a line if i'm in a waiting room if i'm at a stoplight I don't want to feel so sucked into my phone and part of that is now that i've deleted the apps off of my phone there ain't shit to go to go to you know what i find myself doing because i'm so used to picking up my phone and seeing what's going on I have gone to the weather app so many times to check the weather. Did I mean to do that? No, but it's like I'm so used to just like robotically going to look at something on the app that I'm like, oh, well, I'm here, let me do something. And I go and I look at the weather. It kind of just like shows how addicted I've been to my phone and to scrolling. And I don't like it. I, I don't like that because to me, that's not living my life to the fullest. That's I feel like life is just passing me by. And part of that is because I am so sucked into these devices and, and into these apps that I haven't even like, it's like, what do I want to do? Like, what do I want to do in my day? And I feel like I have so much more time to just be. And it feels so freeing. It's only been a week. And I only today actually deleted the apps from my phone. It's been this week that I just like haven't been going on as much. Um, my screen time for Instagram specifically for last week on average was eight minutes. I guess I'm just explaining all of this because I feel like I'm not the only one that feels this way. I know that a lot of people probably feel this way because now like everyone just posts on social media. And if you're not posting, you're scrolling. And if you are posting, you are scrolling as well. Like we're all just so into each other's business. And it's like, <sighs> it's just too much. It's loud. And I feel like 
It's just impacting my life in a negative way. And it may not be that way for some people. Like you may have like a wonderful relationship with your phone where you're like, yeah, I can unplug and I, I'm not on that much. I, that is wonderful. And that is really just the goal for me. And so what it came down to, cause like when I was really thinking about all of the feelings that I was feeling, it was, I was kind of freaking out because I'm like, uh, my, my job is to create online. So what the fuck do I do? And every time I would see a video on YouTube about, I deleted, you know, social media. Now it's been two years. It's from people who don't create content. Like they have other jobs and they were just using it to use it. And so, and even that has changed their life. So I'm like, how do I do this as someone who creates content? So I really had to like think about it. I just realized if I just delete the apps from my phone and just put all of my energy and focus into creating YouTube videos, like this is what brings me joy. This is what, this is where it all started. When I, like I was explaining before, when I first started creating YouTube videos, I didn't give a shit about Instagram. TikTok was not a thing. Snapchat wasn't even a thing. It was just, I just used YouTube. That was it. I would post on Instagram every now and then, or even if it was like every, I don't even think it was every day. It was like once a week. YouTube was like my main thing. And it's like, I just wanna get back to that because that this is where like my joy and creativity lies. And then I started thinking like, you know, fall's coming up, <laughs> my favorite. I know it's July, don't come for me, but I'm ready for fall things. And I'm like, oh, well like I wanna like post like, you know, X, Y, Z for Instagram. And I'm like, I still can. I can still do that when I'm ready to do that. It is an easier way to connect and chat, like through DMs. I have a lot of great conversations with you guys through DMs, but I don't think I need to be there constantly. You know, I think it would be, I would have a better relationship with it if I just popped in on Instagram.com, messaged you guys on there every now and then throughout the week, I don't know. Just having more of that boundary, I think would be really, really healthy for me. And I think it'd be really healthy for you too. If you are having these same feelings, like create some boundaries because there's no reason why we need to be so plugged in to our phones. Like it just, there's no reason. There's no reason for it. Um, I understand though, sometimes like people feel the community aspect. Um, I just think that when it comes to that point where it's like, it truly is like a healthy outlet for you. I just feel like those people are few and far between. It's not the majority. Oh, man, that feels so good to get off my chest because I have just been, I feel like those feelings have been lingering for a long time, but it really kind of like came up to the surface last week. And I was just like, I am done with this. And this is just a toxic relationship. And, uh, I got to unplug and it has felt amazing, but I have missed this, which is great. Like it just shows even more like how passionate I am about YouTube and um, I haven't overthought as much. Like I tend to overthink everything that I do online and like since getting off of it, not going onto Instagram as much or anything else, it's like, I feel like I can just like think clearly again. Um, and it's still, I'm not even like to that point of like thinking super clearly because it hasn't been that long of being off of it, but it just, it just feels so refreshing and I'm excited for the future and like, just like what's to come of this because I'm already feeling so different. I can't imagine like, after a month of just like not being so engaged on socials. Like it just, it just feels so good. I'm using the NYX Three Steps to Sculpt palette. This is the light one. And I'm gonna use this to do my nose contour. Um, something else that's been on my mind. So I, <laughs> you notice my nails are like non-existent. And these two specifically, so they started cracking vertically I've never had that happen before and it cracked so far back. Like look at how short this nail is. I've never had my nails that short in my life. And basically like I go to the same nail lady all the time, but she 
was going to be out of town so I couldn't get in with her for a long time so I went to someone else and anytime someone else does my nails like they crack and break and and they get like ruined I don't know if it's like the way that they get filed or what I do nothing different it my normal nail lady is just a magician I'm convinced so I just decided I am gonna do like a month of like putting nothing on my nails and just let them breathe for a little bit. And it's so interesting because kind of piggybacking off of that whole social media talk, I was just thinking about, well, shit, like there's always this thing in my head where I feel like I need to look my best for creating videos. I don't even get a lot of negative comments. Like you guys are great, but there's something with me. Like I'm always like, I like I'm criticizing myself and so I don't know it got I got in my head and I was like well shit I need to get like my nails done or get some press-ons whatever once I started like thinking about everything that I just talked to you about I'm like who fucking cares about my nails some of you guys comment like it, recently my nails broke off like a couple months ago and I got comp like a few comments what happened to your nails why are your nails I don't get that like I just and that's also part of why I'm realizing I need to like step away because I'm getting annoyed that people are commenting on my nails. I shouldn't care. I shouldn't give a shit that anybody notices that my nails broke off. Realizing that I'm like being so sensitive about it. It's like okay bitch you need to check yourself that you're being so sensitive. But also like I would never comment like the most dumb thing like that to anybody else because it's so unnecessary and so insignificant it doesn't matter I just I don't know so when this happened to my nails I was like this is so dumb like this is this is so dumb why do I care about that <sighs> I used to spend so much money on trying to look a certain way so I can show up and look my best. And one thing that I'm so glad that I never did is I'm so glad I never got Botox. I'm so glad I never got lip filler, any kind of filler. I've never done anything like that to my face. And there was a time where I felt pressured because everybody else was doing it. No one was pressuring me to do it. It was pressure that I put on myself because everyone started looking a certain way. And I was like, Ooh, I could just look a little, you know, a little bit more like this and a little bit more like that. And I always ended up talking myself out of doing it. And those feelings still creep up obviously because we're seeing what everybody else looks like on the internet. And I, always kind of come back and and think to myself I'm so glad I've never done that before like I'm just glad that I look like me and I don't look like whatever because everyone's starting to look the same to be honest nothing wrong with it again like you do you I almost did it myself but I'm just glad that I didn't but like this is the face that God made my thoughts could change I might uh go and get Botox uh next week who fucking knows that's like one of those things where it's like I never would have wanted that until I started seeing other people doing it and then comparing myself to it and then I started thinking about it so I'm hoping that a lot of that sort of like inner monologue that I have kind of goes away or settles down with not seeing what other people are doing on social media because it's almost like like a subconscious comparison that like I just didn't really it's almost like I don't realize that it's comparison but it's like my own thoughts it like sneaks into my thought process and I'm not realizing that it's coming from a comparison place I feel like it's the way it shows up is like just my own original thoughts, but it's not an original thought that's planted there because you are exposed to what so many other people are doing. And it's in our innate blood to like want to fit in and, and want to be accepted. I'm gonna use the Pat McGrath highlighter. I feel like I haven't used this in a while. I love this so much. It gives a very beautiful, like almost like vanilla-y color. I wanted to give just kind of like a little mini update on some other things since this is kind of like a little life update video and I just kind of like bitched about my midlife crisis uh not midlife hopefully so I was training for a half marathon only like three weeks in but I decided I think that I'm gonna now move that date to next year um whether it be the spring one or the fall one I think come the new year I'll have a better idea of which one I really want to do um but I kind of came to that conclusion because I'm really wanting to now focus more on losing um, weight and getting into like a better routine. I know that like running can help with that, but when I train for a half marathon in the future, I want that to 
like just like my technique to be at the forefront, not like I hope that I'm losing weight from this. You know what I mean? Um, so also I am new to running and I feel like I just want to have a little bit more um, experience under my belt before I go and attempt a uh, half marathon. So that's my goal with that. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. Let me do my eyebrows. It's going to be hard to talk and do at the same time, but we'll figure it out. So I signed up for F45 and I'm just going to do that for a little while because I need some structure and I do really well when I, when there's a class, like I will show up. It's almost like an appointment for me. So I'm going to do that from now on. And I'm excited. I started last week um, I did the trial and that's kind of like when I decided, okay, that's what I want to do. Yeah, that's kind of like my plan right now. It's pretty much just going to do F45. Um, I am still doing ballet as well. Yeah, that's kind of the update on that. I've been getting some questions about like the half marathon and how that's going and it's not. <laughs> like I just, last week is when I made that decision because honestly, when I started like really training, um, the program that I was doing, it had me running like four, three to four times a week and it just was a lot out of my schedule and I'm just like not ready to dedicate that much time to it. Um, I wanna be at a place where I am ready to dedicate that time and that just isn't right now for me. But yeah, I am doing ballet. It's going so great. I love it so much. It brings me so much happiness and joy, just like remembering just being in a class setting and like just the piano music and just the posture. I did not realize how bad my posture has gotten until I started taking ballet classes. You have to be so the whole time and I like forgot. Fifth position, <laughs> just standing in fifth. That used to be just like muscle memory. I could stand in it all day long. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I got thigh more thighs there than before. And I gotta keep my abs tight and stay tall. And it's difficult. It is difficult and it's just been so much fun. And it's just like kind of like ignited like my childhood me and it, it feels really good. I wish it wasn't so far away, but it's worth it once a week. It's worth it. One thing that I have loved about having short nails is that I can do so many things. And so I'm almost like, maybe I'll just keep them short. I can like, like grab things, do things like this is so easy to do. Okay, um, and for my makeup today, I really want to do neutral eye with a thick wing and a naked lower lash line. My favorite palette to do this with is the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. I don't know if this is available, but it was sold out for a bit and it's just, it's such a good classic palette. I'm just going to go in and mix just quite a few of the like neutral shades together. Create the crease of my eye and put it on the outer lid as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of these mixed together. Do the outer lid, outer crease here. I actually have a full tutorial on the look that I'm basically doing. I'll link it in here so you can check it out. It's like how to do the wing and everything that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the L'Oreal Flash Cat Eye Liner. Um, I'm gonna go into the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I just bought a new one and I got the old packaging. I love this packaging so much more than this. Avoiding the lower lashes because I really want those to be like empty. And then for lashes, I'm gonna go into the 424s from Ardell. Don't even think I really need to trim these. I recently picked up the NYX uh, nude beige lip pencil. So I'm gonna line my lips with this. Oh, I think I started talking about being a ballet teacher at some point. I think I must have gotten distracted doing something else. I'm open to potentially being some sort of instructor. Yeah, I don't know, that's random, but it's something that I'm like open to, just like not putting like limitations on myself and being open to doing other things. I've always seen like YouTube as like an end all be all type of thing. And like, not to say I'm gonna be like done with this tomorrow or done with this in five years. This could be something that I very well do the rest of my life, but I'm open to other opportunities and other things that are outside of this realm. And this is like the first time that I've actually like been like, really, like I really mean that. And I really think that 
I don't know, I'm just like open to other things, which is kind of cool, kind of scary, but like I'm excited, you know? Um, I'm also very excited about this lip pencil. Ooh, that is like the perfect, perfect lip pencil color, like a good nude for my skin tone. It's a little cool toned. That's perfect, I love this color. So for my lipstick, I think I'm gonna use the Makeup by Mario Sierra lipstick. I love this color, um, but I think when I apply it, I want to use my lip brush. Goes on a lot thinner in consistency, not so intense. And I just feather it onto the lips. I'm gonna add, <laughs> I might regret this. I put like a teeny tiny bit of concealer. I'm gonna pop that on the center. I just want like a little bit of lightness to the center of my lips. I like that. Last but not least, going in with the Morphe setting spray to set my face. Okay, so this is the final look. Nothing new, you've seen it before, but I wanted to just do like a really classic glam look today. Um, but yeah, that's everything for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I know that I just rambled on about a bunch of stuff and I feel like, I know I really was rambly in this video, but I feel like, I don't know, I hope you guys can relate to what I'm talking about. I feel like it's not even necessarily coming from like a content creator stance. It's more of like a consumption stance of like, I feel like all of us are just kind of consuming a lot of the same content. And so like, it's almost impossible to just have an original thought anymore. Even if we think that we're having these original thoughts, it's all stemming from somewhere. So I hope that this resonated with you. Let me know if you're feeling the same way. If you have tips, like if you cannot relate to this at all and you're like, actually I have like a great relationship with social media and a great relationship with my phone, I'm guessing you have some sort of boundaries with it. Let me know, let all of us know kind of like how you use your phone. If you have like a great relationship with it or things that like, just a way you go about it that seems to work for you. Um, going forward for me, I'm just keeping the apps off of my phone and I'm gonna use these apps as a tool so that I can protect my mental health and, and protect my mental clarity, really. Like, I just feel like I haven't been so clear in so long and I'm, I'm thinking that this is really going to help a lot. And that way I can still show up in a more creative way. Like, I'm really hoping that like, this is a, a good shift for me. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today, especially if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will see you very soon. I'm gonna do a Q&A podcast episode next and I am going to film it. So that will be up on Tuesday. Um, I'm guessing that this video will go up before that. And yeah, stay tuned for fall content. Um, I think I'm gonna do a fall makeup tutorial soon because I just love fall makeup looks. They bring me so much joy and even if, you're not excited for fall. You can still wear the looks during the summer. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.